know, I never know. I always try to get to the gym in the morning so I can knock it out. That's the only time of the day that I can guarantee I always get to the gym. If I push the gym workout out in the afternoon, Murphy's Law hits me, something comes up, a meeting or something's running late, who knows what, and something gets in my way, I cannot always guarantee I get my workout in. And I'm not some meathead that, man, if I don't get to the gym, I don't know who I am or anything else. And, you know, it's like, you know, I don't, you know, like this, I'm full. I, I'm not that kind of guy. I enjoy the process. I don't see the gym as work. I see it as love. And it makes me a more people person. When I get up in the morning, I go to the gym. You know, I come out there just fucking pump up. You know, I just, I have this, this energy that, that you, you can't, you know, some people snort it. Some people shoot it. Some people smoke it. I get sweat for it, man. And I'll tell you, man, it drives me throughout the day. I get up in the morning, it's like 5 in the morning or something, I go get a workout in. I come out of that gym, maybe 6, 6.30, I go back home. I see my neighbors coming out with their robes on and shit, and fucking belly, grabbing the paper and the coffee. And I'm just coming home from a jog, just fucking pumped, you know? You know, they're like, what's going on here, man? I go light passing you by is what's going on, man. I'm on a mission. And when I start my day like that, man, the mind and the body connect. It's unstoppable. I take that momentum and take it to my next endeavor at work, where I'm doing an audition, or I'm going, you know, whatever I'm doing, I'm kicking ass in it. Because I'm already right on thick gear, man. You can't slow me down. When you combine that kind of mentality, that loaded with passion and love, and you believe in what you're doing, second place is not an option, man. It really isn't. And it's not work, it's love. And, and, and it's funny, everyone around you will kind of talk shit about you. Saying, oh man, that's crazy, or he's out of control, or this that. They're talking that way because that's how bad they feel about themselves. When you start to su succeed, guys, and start to achieve things, most people around you do not like that. Why? Because it's like a spotlight shining down on them when there are missed opportunities, when they could have been more, but they, 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 were, they were hesitant in starting you. Instead of going for it, they, they kind of they stepped back a little bit. They weren't quite sure. They, weren't, they didn't have the confidence, which again is the greatest return on investment you get in the gym. Not the body. Yeah, the body's great. But will that, you got that body by, by every day giving your all or sacrifice you feel like it's going for it, right? And then you achieve this physique. Now you're like, man, if I do this same work ethic to anything, I'm going to be successful. So when an opportunity does come up, you're through the gates. You're going at it. You're not waiting for someone to support you in that endeavor. You're going for it. And as you go for it, you stumble a few times. When you get that cup, you finally test one for it to Refacing the failures you get in your stronger form. And it's more of a high man. When you try something, you fail first. And then you back research and you study your failures to the positive to see where to reapply your efforts more efficiently. And then you reapply that same challenge and then you're successful. It's one of the sweeter highs in life, man. No chemical drug can ever fulfill you that sense of that way ahead. Your friends won't like that, though. Because as you start to rise up, like my neighbor, the fat fucker, with the robe on and shit when I'm coming home, he doesn't like me giant home all swollen up, feeling love and life and everything else, as he's sitting there trying to grab the coffee and the dog just going to blanket or something. He's bitching about this or that, and I'm coming home just positive. He doesn't like that. Because he sees a differential of the man he could have been and the man he is. So they're hate on you for that. Look at that as, as a form of a of respect. Look at it as like they're basically saying, man, good job. But I don't have the nuts to say it to you, so I'm gonna disguise the clapping in a way that's uh, you know, what are you doing crazy, man? Learn that language code there, man. And then anybody that is a negative asset to your life. Don't need them, man. Get around positive people. All right, that was a, um, a, a long answer for a basic question. But I, I rumble, man. I just, um, yeah. So give me another question. You want to go right back down here again? Okay. Oh, we got a microphone. All right. Give me about your motivation. Motivation. Oh, um, God. That, that's the thing, man. I tell you, that's the only thing that's missing out there. That's the only thing that's missing out there. And it's the one thing that this world needs, and I don't care what fear it is. If I'm up here talking about fitness, or Steve Jobs up here talking about the, you know, the past Steve Jobs about new iPad, whatever it is, it's the motivation to inspire the uninspired. We all have that, that, that green button inside of us. We all have that potential at birth. We all have the same seed. It's not a genetic code. It's not like somebody has a big seed, someone has a small seed. We 
They don't have these seeds inside of us. They need to be nourished. They need to, they need to be ignited. That nourishment usually comes from two aspects. Fear and failure. Those two things, my friends, is the fastest way to any kind of dream you've ever wanted to become. You want to find out who you are? You want to find out the right path? Face your fears. Your fears is a small window, self-created inside. You create that. It's intangible. Meaning it's not like, it's not something you can touch and feel. You create it. You can destroy it too. It's a parasite feeding off through the host, feeding off the top. You created that. If you're at the fork in the road, you don't know which way to go. Face your fears. Go down that path. Once you face your fears, you find out, one, they're very small, but not as big as you as you create. And right behind that window, that door you create, is a fucking person you always wanted to be. If you face your fears right behind that, you get blessed with confidence, you know, it's this eternal pride that anything's possible. There are no longer problems in the world. They're just situations that you can work to your favor. You feel invincible. You're no longer the servant of life. You are running the day. The day is not running you. You're the master of the ship. It's got to be that way. But you never get that return. That, that investment return back to you. Until you can grab your nuts. And be fucking. I don't care what happens. I'm going to face it. If I fall. I'm going to fall forward. You got to have that mentality. Second place. Or you, know, you guys. Um, let's play baseball at all. You know baseball sports. You know? Well, no. You guys play soccer. That's it right. Um, uh, I don't have any metaphors of uh, soccer. Anyway, <laughs> baseball, like, you'd be on first base and people can steal, you know? But you got it, like, I'm safe on first base. I'm on first base. I can't get out, right? I can't score either on first base. I've got to come off the bag looking for second place. I might get picked off. It's in that danger zone, man. It's scary, man. Your anxiety's filled. You know, those pressure, you know, the, you know, the anticipation is it's the best form of life. That's when you're really living. You're not living, sitting back, drinking some wine, looking at your past achievements. That's dead, man. That's great. That's who you were. That's, that's, that's what made you who you are. But where are you going? Where are you living in the past? Success is a very dangerous road, guys. Success. Because it's a double-edged sword. When you first get it, right? You put the sword in. It feels great. You achieve this success. Then the worst thing happens. People sit back on their loins for that success. Everyone's kissing their ass and sucking their dick. And they're like, yeah, man, you're the man, you're the man. He's like, yeah, I know I'm the man. But well, you were the man yesterday. Who are you today? Are we just looking back on who we used to be? Or are we still that person? The saying that they say, never forget where you came from. That saying is about, don't forget the attitude you had. Don't forget the drive you had that got you to this level. Because if you still remember who that is, where we are right now is not the end but just the intermission of where we can still go. Success is dangerous because when you first get it, you define it. You gave birth to it. It exists because of who you are. And then later on, you get a little weak, you get a little dark, you get a little lazy, right? And we sit back, and then we, are, we allow that point to flip over. And then we become defined by that success. Meaning, that's not Greg. Uh, before, that's Greg right there, man. He did this, and then later it's like, he's that champion, ain't Greg. You understand the difference right there? One is moving forward and achieving, the other one has stopped achieving and is just living off the past name. How do you stay motivated? God, man, I get this question a lot, man. Uh, it's a baseball term would be. <laughs> Sitting there, the ball, the pitch comes in, you swing, you know, and you miss, you swing down. You know that feeling, right? You know that feeling sucks. Then the pitch comes in, and you swing, and you crack it as a home run. You know that feeling. Both are the same efforts. One successful, one's not. The thing is, when you're swinging, that's when the game's on. Prior to that game on, we have the opportunity right now to train. And the harder we train, increases the chance of success out here. I I love hitting the ball out of the park. That feels so good to me. I hate the feeling of failure. I think about that right here. When I'm training with no one watching, when it's five in the morning and it's raining outside, everyone's sleeping. I'm trying to get ahead, not of them, but of my past self. I'm trying to achieve more than what I've done before. 
I don't use expressions like good enough. Good enough is not good. Good enough is saying, yeah, this, that's good enough. We don't know if it's enough, do we? No, because today isn't the day we're getting tested. Later in life, when that pitch comes in and we hit it on the floor, then we know that training was good enough or not. And doesn't it suck if we say, yeah, man, today's good enough, good enough, good enough, and we strike out. Well, we can't go back and change it, can we? So in our training module, if we give it our all here, and we never say things like good enough, I ensure tomorrow we will always have enough. Because you give it your all, you leave everything there. And when you give it all here, in the gym, in your training, in your studying, in your relationship, then you have the right to demand it. It's not expected to demand it all out here. But it doesn't work the other way around. Um, motivation is imperishable. Just like confidence. Meaning perishable, you use it or you lose it, like going to the gym. If you're lifting, you're doing your biceps up, right? And then you go out partying for a week, you lose some of that strength. That doesn't, you don't keep this strength. It, it, it runs parallel with how you live. You live like a fat ass, you look like a fat ass. You, you, you train like a champion, you live like a champion. They parallel each other. If you stop doing it, it doesn't keep going. No, it comes back down to where you are. Perishable. Success, you need success, you get normal, you get success, right? And it's dangerous, so you start to become defined as success. That's what happens with confidence too. You start to do the things that are normal, the things that are easy. You start going to the gym and you do the same workouts every day, the same workouts because they're easy for you, right? You know, you go into the gym to do leg day, right? It's not a good day for you, you don't like your legs. But all of a sudden, the hot girls are that day. Arms. I look good in arms, you know? I look good. I want to press her. I'm doing that. So we just gave her all this power, didn't we? She owns her ass. She doesn't even know it's working and there were some tits that aren't even hers, but ass not even hers, hair not even hers. And she is making us come off of our system. Where we want to go, we knew that's how we're going. But all of a sudden, we're so quickly diffused for this. It's like, no, don't do that. your dreams guys when you chase your dreams and you stay on track guess what you don't need to chase anybody they come chasing you because they will be part of what you're doing that's called leadership but you've got to use it to lose it you can't you can't do the same thing over and over again expect to an outcome you got to challenge yourself you got to face your fears you know the failures of life in the gym outside the gym they are report cards with tremendous information and knowledge to how to improve where you are to where you want to go. Right now, you're stuck in the middle, man, of where you were and where you want to go. You don't know where to go, man. Look at your failures. There's a recipe of success with how to get to the next echelon. But you got to be strong enough. you got to be able to face that fear. You know, the perception, guys, the truth of the endeavor, whatever the truth is, underlying. Everybody here agrees that this is true. That's not as strong as the perception of the individual and how I see that truth. That's more powerful. Now, if you're in the gym doing something, you believe it. Because you're there for a reason. You, it's not a matter of it. It's just when you've got that in your hands that fast. Another question. Parking lot, Miami Fitness, man. Burbank, California. 6 a.m. right now, early. It's cold too, man. See, I like these conditions. Because if you can perform in these conditions, man, anything's easy. Especially when you're competition sleeping, you're out here working, it makes your desire solidify even more. Because success doesn't know these things about cold or early or tired. It just knows if you showed up or not. The difference between someone successful and someone that's not successful is not their ability. Because this world is filled with people who's never achieved their true ability. The differential is their desire.
Whereas we're tired, it's early, and it's cold. We didn't want to be here. Well, we are here. We're getting stronger for it because our desire is the warmth of our life, not a blanket. Strength, guys, is not found in the victory. No, it's found in the hardships and what you overcome to get the victory. And it's in the details, guys. Yeah, if you guys have these big dreams in life, that you're going to master this monumental task and be excellent in that endeavor, it starts here by mastering and being excellent in the small detail endeavors. You can't get that without mastering this first. You're wanting to believe I'm scared of what's coming, but I begin to see that you're weak. Now, don't show your teeth to me. It won't hide the fears that are growing underneath your see-through pride. So you think you know who I am. You ain't seen nothing yet. The pain you feel in here, guys. It's temporary. My last a rep, maybe two reps, minute, maybe the entire hour and a half this workout's gonna last. As long as you continue to push through it, that pain will always be temporary. Pride will be forever. If you quit in this process, then that pain will last forever. Workout's done, you paid your fucking dues. You're that much closer to becoming that person you always knew you could be. I mean, isn't it about time you do that? Isn't it about time you become that person you knew you always could be? How do you do that? You break the fucking mold, guys. You get the fuck out of bed when it's cold, when it's early. You do something away from the normality of what you've been doing. That's, that, that, that's it, that psychotic behavior. Doing the same thing, expecting a different result doesn't work that way. You must switch up the mainframe. Switch it up if you want a different result, man. Why not try it, man? Shock the system. Start with an earthquake, man. What I mean by that is, yeah, get up at four in the fucking morning one day. Just one day. And go for a fucking run. Commit to one day. And see how you feel as you're jogging it back in around five or something, as your neighbors are still asleep. Or as you're jogging it back in at six o'clock and your neighbor's just getting up, grabbing the coffee, looking outside, wondering, you know, what the day's gonna hold for them. Well, your day's already provided something for you. You see how that works? Mentally you feel like, wow, man, that was a fucking alive. And then you go about your day at work and your coworkers are like, who the fuck, what, you, what, happened, to, what happened to old Greg, man? You, this is a new, who's this? That's right, the new motherfucker's here to stay. And get the fucking on my plan or get the fuck out of my way. That's how you run it, man. But you won't get to know what I'm talking about, man. You can't look at a picture of something of Hawaii and feel the cool breeze and the warm water. You gotta be there, man. You can't talk it all the time, you gotta walk it. Commit to one day, try it, see how it feels. Getting up that fucking early when everyone else is asleep or in that cold, when everybody else says, no, this is not comfortable, we shouldn't do this. You say, yes, motherfucker, I'm gonna introduce myself to it. And who that person is, we don't know. Who could it be? It's exciting, man. Because the way you feel after that, as exhausted or as how you know, unpleasant as the experience might be, the after effect on how prideful you feel, man. Now, that's something you're either going to love or not. And if you love it, dude, you're on your journey to something magical. The real tragic thing in life isn't somebody that doesn't achieve their goal. It's a person that never had a goal to begin with. That's the saddest part.